This lesson will be about dot products. A dot product is a product of two vectors, and the result is going to be a number, or what we call a scalar. So I'm going to give you two generic vectors, a and b, and the dot product of a and b is defined as the product of the first two components plus the product of the second two components and continuing down to the product of the last two components. So an example is that u dot v with the given vectors u, 1, 2, 10, and v, negative 2, 3, 4, is 1 times negative 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 10 times 4. And the result is going to be 44. So dot products have a lot of properties that we can look at. The first is what happens if you dot a vector with itself. So what is a dot a? That would be a1 times a1, or a1 squared, plus a2 times a2, or a2 squared all the way down to a n times a n or a n squared. And you'll notice this is what normally sits under the square root when we find the length of a vector. So this is actually the length of a squared. Another useful property is that a dot b is the same thing as b dot a. So the dot product commutes just like multiplication. There's also a distributed property. So a dot, the result of b plus c, is going to be a dot b plus a dot c. And then if you have a scalar that's multiplying a, and you dot that with b, that's the same thing as taking that scalar r and multiplying it by the result of a dot b. Now you might be wondering what are these dot products used for? So one way that we can look at the interpretation of the dot product is the fact that a dot b is equal to the magnitude or length of a times the magnitude or length of b times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. So in order to illustrate this, I've drawn two vectors, a and b. Each one of them has an angle. Theta a is the angle from the x-axis to a, and theta b is the angle from the x-axis to b. And what I want to look at is the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, which is really the cosine of theta b minus theta a. And what is that? Well, we know from a trig identity that that's equal to cosine of theta b, cosine of theta a, plus sine theta b, sine theta a. So now we just need to calculate what the cosines and sines of theta a and theta b are. Well, the cosine of theta b is going to be the adjacent length, which happens to be the first component of the vector, b1, divided by the length of b. So we have the adjacent length, b1, divided by the length of b. And then similarly, the cosine of a is going to be the adjacent length, which happens to be the first component of a, a1, divided by the length of a. Now, if we want to find the sine of theta b, that's going to be the opposite length. Okay, so that's, that's b2. Okay, this length right here is actually b2. So the opposite length, b2, divided by, again, 
the length of B, which is the hypotenuse there. And then times the opposite length for A, which here you can see is the second component of A, or A2. And we're going to divide that by the hypotenuse, which is again the length of A. So in the denominator, we have the length of A times the length of B. And in the numerator, you can see that we have A dot B. So if we go ahead and multiply by that denominator, we can see that A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Okay, one important uh, result from, from this theorem is that if two vectors are perpendicular, then the dot product is zero, or you can say if the dot product of those two vectors is zero, then the vectors must be perpendicular. And this can easily be seen by the fact that if we were looking at two perpendicular vectors, we would be looking at the cosine of the angle of 90 degrees, or pi over 2, and that, of course, is 0. So now we can show that uh, these two vectors, the vectors 3, 5, and the vector negative 4, 4, are not perpendicular by taking their dot product. So here we have the dot product is 3 times negative 4 plus 5 times 4, and that equals 8. And since that's not 0, we know that those two vectors are not perpendicular. Now, I have two three-dimensional vectors here, and we can ask a question such as if we were to determine a value of k, uh, could we determine a value of k for which these two vectors are perpendicular? So we could take the dot product of these two vectors, 3, 5, 1, negative 4, 4, k. Notice that each of these two vectors are the same as the two-dimensional example above, but now we're extending them to three dimensions. And the dot product here is again 3 times negative 4 plus 5 times 4 plus 1 times k. Adding those up, we get 8 plus k, but we want that result to be 0. So k, in order for those two vectors to be perpendicular, must be negative 8.